What's good? What's good, party people? Welcome to Candid Conversations. How are you? How's your spirit? I pray that you are protecting your magic by any means necessary. Okay, let that be your uh, your mantra for today or tomorrow or for the whole entire week. Okay, take what you need. So today I want to talk about confidence and what that looks like every single day and how to practice confidence every single day. Because here's what I want you to understand. Confidence comes last. <laughs> and for me, confidence is simply whatever happens, I'm going to figure it out. It's not avoiding if you fail, it's embracing when you fail, you're going to bounce back from making a mistake. And if it's one thing I've learned from conducting workshops and working within my Stories That Sell Mastermind group, it's that a lot of the times we are waiting to feel ready. It, confidence isn't a feeling, it's an act. The action comes before the belief. Right now, I know some of you are hiding your talents because you want to know with absolute certainty that you're going to succeed if you put yourself out there. Listen, certainty is the enemy of growth. You cannot control outcomes. You can only control your efforts. It takes both mindset and method. And one of the methods that I live by is the four P's to being confident and killing it. So the first P, purpose. Second P, plan. Third P, practice. Fourth P, progress. So let's break that down. So when we think about purpose, you got to get clear. What's my purpose and why am I doing this? But equally important is identifying the thoughts that are interfering with that purpose. So what are the thoughts that I'm having right now that are interfering with that purpose? So some of the thoughts like, oh, I wish... I could do this. So you got to be careful again, because if you listen to my last podcast episode on self-doubt, you know, I stressed the fact that words have power. Watch how you speak to yourself. So you say things like I wish I wish just simply means I'm not in control. I wish equals the fact that you are disempowering yourself. Because if I say, you know, I wish I had a gazillion dollars right now, then that means I'm out of, you know, I don't have the ability to make a gazillion dollars right now. That's totally out of my control. So you got to get clear on that purpose, but you have to understand the language that's interfering with that purpose. Another thing to be mindful of is the thought of, I want to do this, but I don't know how. See, the problem with I don't know how is people get caught up in this rabbit hole of, you know, wanting to know how everything is going to play out. Chances are, you know, the next best thing that you need to do, but you want to really know the next five things that you need to do. So that brings me into the second part of the four P's, which is plan. Because when you get into the step of planning, I want you to ask yourself, what are the first two things I need to know to move forward? And what are the first two things I need to do to move forward? Be mindful that how wanting to know the whole 10 steps of how it's going to, you know, pan out for you. It creates clutter and it creates confusion because then you want to build stories around. Well, what if this happens at that step? And what if this happens at step number seven? Just get focused on those first two things. First two things you need to know. First two things you need to do. And then you may have to say a affirmation. You could steal one of my favorite affirmations. I often say this to myself. I'm making the best decision I can with the information, resources, and tools I have access to right now. Because see, in that planning phase, when you're looking at those two things, chances are your brain is going to say, what if this and what if that and all those sorts of things. And I want you to understand that it's only about the information, resources, and tools you have access to right now. Any information you learn after the fact doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Because when it comes to making a decision, you're either going to make a decision, learn from it, and move forward. 
or make a decision and love it and move forward. Either way, you're going to move forward. Remember, confidence is about the bounce back. Okay, it's about the action. And so when you think about planning, I want you to stop yourself at just figuring out the first two at most the three things you need to do to move forward. The third step is when can I practice? Right. What's the smallest action I can take every single day to create momentum around my goal? Because, see, that's another thing. More important than a goal itself is the momentum that you're going to establish around that goal. And so I think back to uh, October 2019. I wound up in an emergency room. Um, I was just, I had a really horrible week of not eating properly. And listen, there's no better way to get your mind all the way together than an emergency room. Okay. And so at that moment, I decided I just wanted to live a healthier lifestyle. And I took one of the things that I've learned from reading the book Atomic Habits and really started to focus on the smallest action that I could take to feel better. Because, you know, listen, of course, I was in an emergency room because physically something wasn't right. But then I'm beating myself up internally. Okay, so then I had to trick myself into getting my mind right. And, uh, of course, you could say to yourself at the moment, oh, I want to lose 20 pounds, but that's not going to make me feel better by tomorrow. (laughs) Right. So a few things that I did to kind of, you know, establish a momentum around ultimately living a healthier lifestyle is one intermittent fasting Two, I changed, um, my eating habits, particularly around fruits and vegetables and things of that sort. So every single day, I could probably count on the on one hand, but every single day I have a cup of blueberries and strawberries and blackberries. I have yogurt. Um, I eat a lot of vegetables. So this has been going on. It's what, May 2020. This has been a practice of mine since October 2019. And so that was the smallest thing that I could do. And then I started to build on that many habits uh, with by 1%, right? So I would add like a 1% kind of level up to that better habit. Because I know for me, I just wanted to lead a healthier lifestyle. And in fact, like my family teases me, like, what do you, what did you have for breakfast? Oh, we know berries, <laughs> some granola and berries. And I could count on one hand how many times I've had, you know, sometimes I slip up and I like to have me some fish and grits. Okay. But nine times out of 10, I'm a berry and yogurt girl. Okay, Um, but anywho, it was important for me to establish momentum and figure out when could I practice every single day. And so I'm a morning person. So it was important for me to establish a new routine around becoming a person who lives a healthy lifestyle. And I'm very mindful of in the morning of what I'm going to put into my body in the morning and even in the afternoon. I already know I have the whole in the evening. I have the whole entire day planned out. Okay, so you have to identify the smallest action and the smallest time it's going to take for you to build momentum ultimately around the goal that you want to accomplish. Even if that goal takes you a year, the momentum is more important. Focus on that. The effort is more important. I want you to focus on that. So now, right, you're putting things into play. You're moving along. We can't forget about step four, progress. You see, what I want you to understand is that you're going to have setbacks when you're practicing. You're going to make mistakes. You are going to fail. Okay. But listen, failure is feedback for your come up. So you have to make sure that you are making room to assess your progress. And a big part of that is also understanding that sometimes how we see ourselves is different than how we are perceived by others, or it's different than how we are showing up in the world. So a huge part of that progress is asking for feedback, right? So 
depending on your goal, you know, you could ask for feedback from a friend, you could uh, invest in a coach, you can ask your therapist, a huge part of your level up, a huge part of becoming the next best, most confident version of yourself is asking for feedback. It's listening, being open to people uh, giving you constructive feedback and giving you different ways to accomplish your goals or to put it, put yourself out there every single day. So I want you to get in the habit of thinking progress versus perfection. When you think progress, you're not only assessing your own progress, but you're, you know, you're more open to getting feedback from outside sources. And sometimes you're going to have to ask, be very clear about asking or be very intentional, I should say, about asking for feedback, telling people, look, this is ultimately where I'm trying to grow. I like to say grow versus go. This is ultimately where I'm at. I'm trying to grow. Can you give me some feedback? What should I do more of? What should I do less of? Right? What do you think I'm overlooking? What am I underestimating about this entire process? So that's my four P's, people. Purpose, plan, practice, and progress. It's every single day. It's every single day. It's identifying what part of that that journey you are committed to. Every single day, the confidence comes last. Stop thinking you have to feel ready. It's not about feeling ready. The action comes before the belief. That whole thought around feeling ready is probably what's keeping you stuck and you're beating yourselves up because you want to be perfect. Right. You don't want the feedback. And I'm here to tell you that that feedback is part of your process. Again, it's not about if you fail. It's about when you fail. Are you prepared for that moment? Are you prepared for that moment that you're going to have to ask for feedback or assess your progress and say, okay, that didn't work. But this is another way that I could try it and reach success. Right. It's about embracing the experimental mindset. The experimental mindset is every single thing that I put out into the world is an opportunity for me to grow and get feedback. Every single thing that I put out into the world. It's an opportunity for me to learn and to discover. And that where I start is not going to be where I finish. I'm open to learning different things. You see, another thing we don't really talk about a lot is curiosity. Curiosity is often key to your level up. We don't talk about that a lot. That's it's being open to the entire experience of getting it right, but also getting it wrong. So that's it. Okay, y'all. I think I'm rambling now, but I am done for today. Okay, I'm going to get with y'all tomorrow. Please leave me a comment. Rate my podcast. Let me know what you think. If you have some topics you'd like for me to cover, holla at your girl. Okay, you can email me at hello at candiajohnson.com. I am off this. I think I'm about to go have me some berries now, child. Anywho, talk to y'all soon. Bye-bye.